guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i want to talk about um something that's been plaguing my collection for the past year and that's spider mites and thrips so they are difficult to deal with so in today's video i'm going to share how i get rid of spider mites and thrips in my collection i find that getting rid of spider mites is a lot easy um thrips you need to do a little bit more so i'm going to discuss what they look like, um, how to treat it, and um, some preventative measures that I take to get rid of them. If you guys like this kind of video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. Let's jump right in. So spider mites, it's something I've been dealing with in my collection for the past year. Um, I have an orchid right now with spider mites that I'll show you, but sometimes they can get quite out of hand and the leaves, as you can see, get quite scarred up. So here's a normal leaf here, and then here's a leaf that's been infested with uh, spider mites. Um, they're just kind of annoying to deal with. The best thing you can do is prevent um, the spider mites from reaching your plant. And what I like to do is every time I flush my orchids, I like to not only flush them, but I run water through the leaves to keep the leaves clean, and I find that that keeps the pest population at bay. So that's a preventative measure that I take. I also make sure whenever I get new plants that I, I quarantine them for a little bit before putting them right next to the shelves because you never know if you're gonna be bringing in a pest from elsewhere. So just quarantine, keep an eye on it. If you don't see any pests on it for about a week or two weeks, then it's generally fine to bring to the um, collection. Also, you can preventi preventatively treat the new plant to make sure that you're getting rid of anything on it anyway. So the next thing that I like to do, if I see spider mites on my plant, like the one that I showed you, um, normally I could tell because I run my finger through the um, through the leaf and I will look at my finger and if I see red dots or like little black dots I know that I have spider mites so what I then do is I will take some water in a little spray bottle I put like a pump of uh, soap not very precise with it and then I will spray it down that usually helps get rid of the spider mites um, something that you could also do that adds even more is you can take a spray bottle a pump of dish soap and then you can add some neem oil to the mix. Now the neem oil will tend to be diluted um, at a specific ratio. It's usually done per gallon so you could take your neem oil, put it in a gallon jug, mix it up the way that the package says and then you could pour it into your uh, spray bottle, add a pump of soap, dishwashing soap. Usually I use Dawn dish liquid and that's fine and then you shake it up and you can use your solution. So what I like to do is I will do it over the sink. I will take my mixture. I will spray my plant down completely and I will saturate my orchid. And then um, what I like to do is I wanna make sure that it dries and I wanna keep it away from lights. So something that I learned the hard way when I first started growing is I was treating too aggressively with neem oil and I would put my plants right under lights and then they would burn. So you never want to put a wet plant with neem oil right back on your, under the sun, under LED shelves, or they will burn. So that's something to keep in mind. But this solution is pretty easy and it works pretty well because you've got the soap and you have the neem oil that um, basically smothers the spider mites and then they fall off. It's also helpful to take off the little papery sheaths especially if you have like cat leaves, so you'll notice that this one I took them off because they may hide under there. It's always saying hello. So um, I like to spray that and then just basically smother my my cat leaves or my oncidiums. It works for any kind of um, orchid, but you want to keep it away from the from the lights. She doesn't want to leave, so I'll leave her. <laughs> okay, so I'll either rinse them out or I will use that spray bottle mix with the neem oil or the soap and that tends to get rid of spider mites. Now, as a heads up, that doesn't work that well for thrips. I've done it before with thrips. You rinse out your plants or you use neem oil with your plants. You need something stronger with thrips and we'll get into that shortly. 
Basically smothering the orchid keeps the spider mites away. And you'll notice that you'll get spider mites on very dusty leaves. You get them a lot on catacetums. Once they take a hold of your collection, they could do a lot of damage very quickly. So you, if you start seeing um, some brown marks on your plants, I just take my finger and I run it through and I see if there's anything on my finger. You could take a paper towel and then put it through the plant for more contrast so you could see if there's anything in the paper towel, um, but you wanna treat your plants very easily. This year I got a lot of spider mites, so I had to do this quite a lot. You'll find that weaker plants tend to get spider mites more than some of your stronger plants. You'll also find that there's certain types that are more prone to others. So um, I find that my dendrobiums, they have a lot of like sap on them and they tend to get spider mites more. Um, catacetums, they get a lot of spider mites. Their leaves are very um, kind of sappy. So <laughs> I tend to have to watch those even more. Usually the spider mites are like red or or black normally and you'll be able to see them. Sometimes they're brown. Um, once you see those spider mites, you want to treat them so they don't spread to the rest of your collection. And um, they're, I'd say that spider mites are easy to get rid of. They're not too bad. You see them, don't freak out. It's not a big deal. But the rips are a different matter. <laughs> So last year I had a thrips infestation for the first time. I didn't know what thrips were. They were like long little uh, bugs that were all over my collection. They look different from spider mites. They are longer. They do create a lot of damage on your plants and I find that they're not as easy to get rid of. So rinsing my plant off, if I have thrips, the populations still somehow remain. I'll knock down some thrips, but it looks like the eggs and um, I don't know, I don't know what happens, but they remain on the on the plant somehow. So spraying it with neem oil doesn't help all the time. Using water to rinse it off doesn't help. You still have eggs in there and then you still have more. So you need to use a systemic insecticide to get rid of it. So, um, this also works for spider mites, but I recommend it for thrips. I will generally take um, something with spinosad in it. Spinosad is a little bit less toxic, um, a little bit better for Zoe over there, who's just chilling. Um, but I use the brand Naturalite, and what I do is I will take, if I have a thrips infestation, I need to take my collection and bring it to the tub or bring it to the sink, saturate it in a spray bottle, dilute it per the instructions on the label, and then just spray the entire collection. I've used a pump sprayer before, that's one gallon, that's perfect. That way I could take the um, recommended dilution of the product. So I tend to do that as well. I will just take the one gallon, add in the measurement that they asked for, um, and then spray my plants and I find that it works really well. That also works for um, That also works for spider mites too. It is just something more heavy duty when neem oil isn't working or if you have very stubborn pests like thrips that are not as easy to get rid of as spider mites. Thrips create a lot of damage. They tend to spread very quickly through the collection. And once you have it, they tend to eat your flowers. They eat the buds and it's kind of sucky because you grow for the, you grow for the flowers. And when you see the flowers are kind of misshapen, it's, it kind of sucks. So I try to get on top of it as soon as I see them, but I do have some thrips in my collection. I notice just a few here and there, so I treat them. Once you see them though, they tend to spread pretty quickly, so it's better to get your whole collection. Um, one of my friends who also grows indoors, what he does is he has a um, on his shelves some plastic in the back, and on the bottom he has a mat. And what he does is he takes an electric uh, sprayer, he adds the naturalite or the spinosad or the insecticide and then he just sprays it all through the whole collection that's something that he's done it's something you could do really if you don't have pets around um 
natural light is not um i find it doesn't bother my eyes it doesn't bother my hands but you do want to be careful with any pesticides in your home clearly um but if you can protect your walls and put something in the back you could spray with an electric pump sprayer as if you were outdoors um just open your windows wear a mask and keep any pets outside of the area again i don't do it because of my cat but you might be able to do it if you don't have a pet or you can keep them away and you can contain that environment indoors. I hope this video was helpful. Um, in short, if you have spider mites, super easy to get rid of, not a big deal. If you have thrips, slightly more difficult to get rid of, a little bit more serious and I would recommend using a systemic insecticide. I like Naturalite um, and I find that it works really well for me. Um, when I had an infestation last uh, winter, I did my whole collection and I did not see thrips for over a year. It just banished them. Um, and I have some now and that's really because I haven't had time to treat the entire collection. I've just been spot treating here and there. But when you see thrips, it's just better to tackle everything all at once because you never know how they migrate. You may not see the eggs. Like I said, even if you rinse them out, you would think that the thrips would be knocked off and they'd be gone. No, they somehow the eggs stay in there and you still see them. So you have to be quite diligent and go for that systemic insecticide, in my opinion. Let, so let me know down below if you guys use any other methods to take care of pests in your collection. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.